Father God, thank you for this time together. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this time of uh, investing our energy and our efforts into your word, Lord, into your into your uh, truth that you give us, Lord. We just uh, bask in your presence. Thank you for filling this place. Thank you, Lord, for just a good time of worship and knowing truly how great you really are. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, please turn with me to Matthew 28. Going to read verses 5 through 20. He says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there shall ye see him, lo, I told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Amen. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him in security. So they took the money and did as they were taught, and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 And as we all know, this is exactly one week after the resurrection of Jesus. Um, you know, what happened last week was, you know, a couple events, obviously. There was, you know, Good Friday, which was the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the remission for our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And just three days later, we you know, he overcame that grave. He triumphed death, beat hell in the grave, and now we have victory in him. Amen. Amen. Now, what I wanted to do today was um, kind of, Easter is all about the resurrection of Jesus. So today I wanted to touch on what happened after the resurrection of Jesus. What happened after the fact? We know he rose from the dead, but from that point forward, what happened immediately after? So today is what I kind of felt led to share about. One of the scriptures we just read says, uh, be not afraid and go tell the brethren in Galilee. So right there kind of shows me there takes a certain amount of boldness, a certain amount of intestinal fortitude, if you will, that we need to go preach the gospel, come out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of us, uh, uh, myself included, can be shy. We can be intimidated and we can, you know, you can fear persecution and all that stuff. Yeah, we're human. That's the old man. Unfortunately, we have to deal with that. But that honestly is not a, an excuse. There's no way that that excuse will cut it. Now, for instance, and I know this has happened to at least one person here, um, if you're on your job, and the only way you came to know the Lord was for somebody ministering to you on your job, right? Say if that person never were to approach you and preach the gospel to you, you probably wouldn't be here right now. You would have never came to know <coughs> the saving grace of our Lord and Savior if that person didn't come out of their comfort zone Amen. and share with you. Amen. So in this current reality, and I'm not saying you would never hear the gospel if that person didn't do it, but in this current timeline... I'm going to go back to the future on you, if you will. This current yeah. reality, you know, you would not be here right now if that person didn't have the boldness to approach you. 
So that's why we have to throw shyness and fear out the window. Amen. Be not afraid. Amen. Be bold as a lion. So, you know, praise God for people who go out of their comfort zone, like Craig shares all the time. God bless you. Amen. You know, it's, it's something we all really got to work on. You know, and, and I like to remind myself every day, at least try to because I forget a lot of things, I might be the only Jesus anybody ever sees. Yeah. Yeah. I might be the only mouthpiece of Jesus that anybody ever hears. Might only be me. So we got to take advantage of that. It might only be you. You know what I mean? So Amen. pray to God. Quickly looking back at verse 19 and 20 from what we just read, it said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. After Jesus rose from the grave, he soon instructs and commands right after, continue to teach, teach all nations and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, the book of Timothy talks a lot about fighting the good fight of faith. We were doing some reading, some research on that. There's a couple messages about that on the web if you want to go listen. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold unto eternal life. It also talks about we are called to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And one of the things about being a good soldier is to not entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. Amen. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. These things that will take us out of the hand of God. These things that will distract us. This world, I know, has a lot of goodies in it and a lot of things that are easy to distract us, but it's up to us that we do not entangle ourselves in those things. Amen. That ultimately, what the Scripture says, we may please Him. We may make Him happy who has called us to be a soldier. Amen. I want to please the Lord. That is a goal for me. I don't know about you. Amen. 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 Anybody with me? Amen. Um, so when Jesus rose from the dead, the mission was still the same. The call was still the same, plain and simple. We are to fulfill the Great Commission. Go teach the nations, plural. Nations. Yeah. They don't stop at our backyard, in our city. It goes city, city, state to state, all around the world. If we have the capacity to. I know it's kind of hard to go from here to Jamaica, you know, if you don't have the money or the resources, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's about being mission-minded, having that mission mentality. Amen. Amen. But... In order to do these things, it takes obedience. Obedience to the Holy Spirit, faith in the Lord, and boldness. Being not afraid, as Jesus commanded. Be not afraid and go tell the brethren. So that is what we are commissioned to do. Please turn with me to John chapter 21, verses 3 through 19. A lot of reading today, but oh well. It's all good. <laughs> Guys are awfully quiet today. John 13. John 21, 3 through 19. Anybody want to read it? I can do all the reading if somebody else is reading that fine. Steve? Okay. I'm practicing reading lately. Simon, start reading all the way down. Yeah. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved, of the, yeah, the disciple whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard this, heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. 
And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. So, we can definitely see a reoccurring theme. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. I think he's trying to tell us something. We need to feed the sheep, right? The Word of God is a tool that we all have. Now, a matter of how much we use it is one thing or another. Um, with the youth last Wednesday, we were talking about trying to read the Word more and be, and be disciplined about it. But nobody can make you do it but you. You have to invest the time. You have to read your Word. You have to dig in and get the scripture into you so it can pour out of your life that you may feed the sheep. And I know the scripture wasn't covered here, but we all know that Peter walked on the water when Jesus told him to. And he almost fell because he was fearful and he was afraid. His faith wasn't really yeah. there, right? So obedience and faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is his and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. If you, in your heart, seek after the Lord, and if the Lord is your goal, your prize, your possession, if that's what you want, he will reward you. I know Elijah always talks about he wants the reward of reading revelations. That's what he wants because he wants to understand the book. Amen. And someday you will. Amen. Someday you will. Hopefully we all do because that is a very complicated book. Yeah. But it's all about obedience and faith in the Lord feeding the sheep, digging into the Word of God. Amen. And now after Peter and the disciples fishing, after all night of fishing, I'm sure they were tired. I'm sure they were exhausted, especially getting frustrated because they didn't catch anything, right? Jesus says, cast it on the right side. So many fish that they couldn't even draw it back into the boat. That's what the scripture says. With our very little, it will make it much. Amen. Amen. God is a faithful God. Amen. So obedience and faith in the Lord has never changed. The mission has never changed. Throughout the beginning of time, up until this very moment, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. Um, you know, especially the disciples, which I think is really cool, is people who were closest to the Lord. Those who sought earnestly after a God. And I'm sure they were rewarded, as we just read. They drop whatever they're doing. The Lord says, come follow me. Go follow him. Amen. Don't hesitate. Amen. Yeah. You know, the scripture talks about let the dead bury the That's dead. Right. Come follow me. Yeah, that is what they did. That is what we do, speaking in, in faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, we as believers, just as the disciples, have a call to obedience, a call to a life filled with faith in the Lord and obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things is we can always get caught up in, uh, I need proof. I need evidence. A lot of people are like, how do you know God's real? I need evidence. Well... You know, like Thomas, John 20, 29. Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen Amen. and yet believe. We have not seen the Lord physically, but we definitely know who he is and that he's there. You know, one thing is for sure. I mean, I mean, look around. Creation. The, the human body itself is so complex and so just awesome. 
how else could that be formed? Amen. Definitely not by our finite minds. Yeah. Yeah. God is just infinitely amazing. Amen. And Amen. There's something to be excited about. Amen. 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 Um, <laughs> you know, along with Thomas, another scripture talks about if a man say, I love God, but he hates his brother, yeah. he is a liar. That's right. That's true. Amen. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love a God who he has Amen. not seen? Amen. That's good. It's all about faith. It's all about obedience in this world. Philippians talks about to live as Christ, to die as gain. Amen. So each and every day we are to live as Christ. Walk in the newness of life that he gives us, right? Yeah. To die to our flesh. If we die one day physically, you know, that'll be a sad time. But we will be with the Lord. Amen. To be Amen. absent in the body is to be present Amen. with the Lord. Yes. It's something to look forward to. Not that I want to die, but, you know, <laughs> eternal life is going to be a good thing to look Amen. forward to. Us. Um. Let's turn real fast to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 19. Like I said, a lot of reading today. Okay. Amen. 1 Corinthians what? 15, 12 through 19. Yes, I am wearing white shoes with black pants. Just so you know. Everybody's looking at me weird. So you know. Uh, so <laughs> Apparently, because I'm getting all these looks. <laughs> yeah, it matches this, so I'm good. All right. First Corinthians 15, 12 to 19 says, Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? Yeah, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he has raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ not be raised... Your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. That's right. Well, guess what? I've got some good news for you. Amen. <laughs> Christ yeah. did raise from the dead. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. Our faith is not in vain. That's right, amen. And just as Christ died and rose again, we die to our old man and we rise again each and every single amen. day. Amen. To walk in the newness of life, to walk in obedience to the Lord, yes. obedience to the Holy Spirit, and having faith in a wonderful God. Amen. That's right. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you, Lord, for this uh, this time together, Lord, of just uh, growing and in, in, in learning and digging into obedience and faith in you, Lord. Without yes. you, we are nothing. Without faith, it's impossible to please yes. you, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, as a good soldier, Father, we do not entangle ourselves with this life. Yes. We do not get distracted by the petty things of this life, Lord, that we may please you, Father. Yes. We want yeah. to please you in everything that we do, Lord. So we just give you all the glory and the praise today. Yes, Thank you, Lord, for this this time of gathering together with the saints, people who love you, people who have the same yes, interest and bond of wanting to grow with you, yes, Lord. Lord Thank you, Father, for each and every heart here, Lord, myself included, and just passion. I pray that we Amen. can yes, Thank you, Jesus. passion Thank you, Lord. and fire yes, and just Lord. know that there is victory on the other side of this flesh. Yes. There is victory you, through fire. There is victory, Lord, through the trials that we happen to go through, Lord. Hallelujah, and we just pray you be lifted up and glorified yes, in each Jesus. and every moment of our lives, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.